It's Friday night, which means it's time for another episode of the Friday Night Nicktoons podcast. I'm Casey. And I'm Ashley. Last time, we discussed Jimmy Neutron's Valentine's Day episode in honor of everyone's favorite holiday. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, as we said last week, the non-controversial, non-hot topic holiday, which hopefully went well for everybody. Uh, We also put out our weekly Twitter poll asking, from that Jimmy Neutron episode, which couple had the best chance of working out in the future. So, we had one of our closest, highest turnout polls ever. We had 150 votes. We had a lot of interaction with the Jimmy Neutron fandom, which is hilarious to me. No offense to you guys, just how many of you there are out there who just love Jimmy Neutron. Uh, I see it as this niche show, but it turns out it's got this whole following. Uh, Our options were Jimmy and Cindy, uh, Carl and Judy, and Sheen and Libby. And as I thought might happen, you guys picked the memes. (laughs) And Carl and Judy Neutron won the Twitter poll (laughs) with 37% of the vote. Shortly after that was Jimmy and Cindy with 34%. And shortly after that was Sheen and Libby. Now, full disclosure, I voted for Carl and Judy. But in my heart of hearts, I feel that Sheen and Libby are the most well suited for each other. And I voted for Sheen and Libby because I believe in actual romance, not these terrible memes. But <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, yeah. I can't say I blame you guys. The Sir Toasty posted a screenshot and just said, Best ship of all time, TBH, and it's Carl and Judy sitting on the picnic blanket. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, I understand, you guys. I understand. And, you know, honestly, I thought that the memes were going to absolutely destroy and i thought maybe she and libby would just get kind of forgotten like i, I felt like they were kind of a, a lesser cared about ship but 29 percent, i think is respectable i think that's a respectable part of the vote and uh yeah, yeah. you know i'm okay with it, it should be close because they all have a chance except for carl and judy and that's just fun <laughs> uh so we also i'd be remiss to uh not include this tweet that we got in response to the twitter poll from jimmy neutron and the picture is the you know, that weird shaped head cheesing it up. And in character, the account says, Carl's been dating my mom behind my back. I don't know why I thought that was delightful. Look, I'm sorry, Jimmy, that you had to find out like this, but, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> Poor it is kid. what it is. Romance Still is. the same age, 14 years <laughs> later or whatever. <laughs> I mean, it's like, uh, it's like Ash in Pokemon, right? Never yeah, ages. Yeah, The Simpsons, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, this week, we are going to be returning to the Wild Thornberries for the first time in a long while. Glad to be getting back to this, guys. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's a cute episode and a cute show. Uh, follow us on Twitter at FNN underscore podcast and Facebook, facebook.com slash FNN podcast. Review us on Apple Podcasts so others can find the show and check out our YouTube page, which we upload to every week. Love seeing the comments there. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Hashtag FNN Nation. Like, what if we became that kind oh, of podcast? God. Oh, God. <laughs> Smash I don't know that like guys... button. What? Okay, but actually on Twitter, uh, tweet us what our obnoxious like if we were youtube if we were youtube youtubers what would our like hashtag blank nation be called <laughs> uh, Nick, Nick, who knows i don't even i don't even want to entertain this don't <laughs> don't do it guys don't do it <laughs> they love the memes as we saw from the twitter poll too many memes i'm done with this i'm done with this all i i don't even know how to get you know what guys Thanks, thanks for tuning in, and thanks for not sending terrible memes. Now let's get started. All right, guys, as Ashley said before in uh, one of our, I think, angriest transitions into the theme (laughs) song we've ever had, uh, we're discussing the Wild Thornberries today. It's only our sixth time ever talking about it, which of our, like, top ten Nicktoons, we have, like, tiers, we have three tiers of Nicktoons, and this one's in our top one, but we've done it one of the least, so glad to be getting back to it. This one is called Nigel Knows Best. 
It's season one, episode 16, and it originally aired on March 18th, 1999. And in this one, hungry for adventure, Eliza convinces her mother that she should take a llama over the, is that Andean? I don't, Yeah. right? Okay. Over the Andean yeah, pass, yeah. meeting her family on the other side of the mountain, um, which, you know, like you do. Like, Sometimes yeah. you just gotta say, mom, <laughs> I want to take a llama over the Andean pass. It's like, it happens to me every week. <laughs> Yeah, and, well, she she goes with her dad, right? I mean, she's, which, that's why this is called Nigel Knows Best and all that. Um, so, obviously, she's not let to go there just all alone, but she is as adventurous as she is. It's like, she doesn't seem to get how exciting of an experience that in itself is. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I've noticed a, a a vague formula to Wild Thornberry's episodes involving the three acts. The first act is either Eliza and or Debbie freaking out about how, like, stifling their parents are, or how bored they are, or how they're doing one thing and they want to be doing another thing. The second act, Debbie has some antics with a family member. Eliza finds an animal or animals and hangs out with them and often complains about her family to the animals. And then in the third act, Eliza realizes her own hubris and makes good with her family again, only to repeat all of these same mistakes again <laughs> the next week. You know, now that you mentioned it, yeah, it's it's a little bit it's a little bit more repetitive and I think part of it is that we watch these sort of spread out from one another so it doesn't quite feel as uh monotonous but now that you're mentioning it yeah wow like every every but time also, isn't that childhood isn't that childhood though relearning the same lessons and having to continue to like apologize for the same thing? yeah that's fair that's fair it's just a lot of like the same like oh they're so that specifically and this is this is i don't know this episode specifically was getting to me on it just the idea that she has stifling parents is just ridiculous to me, right? That's so true. Like, yeah, you're ugh, right. My dad wants to wash me while we hike up this mountain. 15,000 foot peak. Yeah. Like, come on. It's ridiculous. Like, yeah, it's like the older I get, the less I identify with Eliza and more the more I identify with the parents where it's like, Eliza, this is all really cool. And also you'd think by like the fifth time she becomes inches away from death, she would learn to trust her parents who are the actual nature experts. And to be fair, there's a, there's like plenty of times where they'll be like, all right, you two, go on, go out into the wild, don't get hurt, right? Like, this is this is one of the few times that he's quote-unquote overprotective and he literally is just like there there is a moment um they're like climbing up the peak and um he wants to like tie a rope around her like a leash and that's probably a dash too far but other than that like he's teaching mm -hmm. her breathing mm -hmm. techniques which she... the singing the singing is kind of a lot too. yeah but that's also just kind of him right i mean i get that that's it's annoying true. but but the breathing thing is yeah. also legit like um Altitude sickness is a legitimate thing, and if you don't wash your breathing, especially because if you're climbing, right, you, you're you doing heavy exercise, you don't think about it as much, you start breathing too much, and it can really screw you up with the altitude. So, like, he's not wrong. Yeah. He's annoying about it, yeah. but he's not wrong. <laughs> right. And it is, I mean, Eliza even had to convince her parents to do this in the first place. So, like, that was cool of them to let Yeah, her. and they didn't even put up way too much of a fight on it. Um, no. Anyways, I think we're we're getting way out ahead. I we I think we, yeah. we do need to get back to the very beginning of this one, don't we? <laughs> yes, we do. They're talking. They're in Peru, right? And they're talking about llamas. And Darwin has this amazing sassy line. He's like, "Who cares about llamas? Like, they're why would you be interested in some wannabe giraffe?" <laughs> I thought that was kind of brutal. Yeah, I mean, come on, man. They're I'm I'm a llama fan. I think they're pretty cool. And this llama specifically. I love all of the different voice acting always for the different animals, but I, I'm i loving this llama. Yeah, I adored this llama. In fact, I'm looking up who it was right now. Uh, very curious. I can't... Yeah, it doesn't say, but... Well, she has this adorable Peruvian accent and like it's all that's a, the animals are, are always, I think, the best parts of this show. There's the voice acting, like you said, is so entertaining and funny. They get really kind of snappy, funny lines. Yeah, there's a there's a moment where 
I don't remember what what's Eliza talking about. Um. Oh. If you remember, go ahead. It's. Uh, I don't. I don't. Yeah, but it's something she's explaining something to something American, the probably Maybe right? About humans. Yeah, something yeah. that humans or Americans yeah. or something like that. I don't know. And the yeah, the llama says you might as well be speaking alpaca to me. <laughs> Just very cute. Uh, but yeah, so ultimately, Eliza convinces her mom that she can take a llama over the Andean Pass, as we said before, and this llama is awesome. Uh, she's a great companion for Eliza along the way. She's fun and adventurous, but not in a totally reckless way. She does kind of hop out a little far in the mountains when they're climbing this mountain peak, and it is momentarily very terrifying. Yeah, it and, and again, it's like... Her dad freaks out, but, like, I'm terrified and I'm watching a cartoon version of it. So it's pretty valid that when you are steps away from falling off this cliff where you would die, I think, you know, I think part of it is that Eliza just has a a poor sense of how close to death she is at almost all yeah. times in the series. Because it happens, it happens a lot. <laughs> yeah, like, really close to death here. Like, all the time. And she just doesn't... She just doesn't know fear, which I do like her for that. I think, you know, she's got this good adventurous spirit and I, I love her for that. But sometimes I'm like, man, you need a dose of reality. And you'd think, you would think like almost dying would be that dose. Apparently it's not. Nope, it's not quite enough uh, because her life is so extraordinary and so different uh, she just has nothing to compare it to. Yeah, I do want to quickly jump over to the side plot before we yes. we forget about yes. it. Um, there's always, like Casey mentioned, there's always got to be something with Debbie and that madness and the side plot going on. And basically, it's just that uh, that um, their grandma, right, Marianne's mom, sent like a care package with soap and snacks and something, and I guess she takes that to mean that her mom thinks that she's a bad mom and she, like, gets into this crazy mom mode. It's madness. Yeah, it gets, uh, this is kind of Marianne at her worst. She's, like, just got so much to prove and she's trying to just show to Debbie, but more to herself, what a good mom she is. Yeah, and it kind of ends up being the opposite, <laughs> Yes, she becomes, you know, she endangers Debbie through a, a moment of road rage at these nuns, which is uh, quite the scene. Oh man, that's good too. She's like, nuns? Nuns think I'm a bad mother? It's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> it's completely projected and put on, yeah. And, uh... Yeah, that's pretty much the gist of, of that whole thing, right? She She also, she, I don't know, she makes sandwiches and has to, like, cut him up because she's like oh donnie doesn't want the crust on them which is also silly because like donnie is not exactly the most picky of eaters well he then after she cuts the sandwich up he then takes both pieces of sandwich crushes them together and eats them as a giant sandwich wad yeah so <laughs> kind of clearly he doesn't care whether it's cut or not i was a kind of wasted effort but she's trying to be a good mom and you know debbie does kind of step in and is like look you're a good mom regardless of all of that and it's it's a cute little moment it's a basic little side plot there um i wasn't super invested in this one personally i was yeah. a little bit more yeah. worried about eliza's again just potentially freezing on the top of the mountain yeah and so the third act you know she she cuts away from her dad she talks it over with the llama and the llama's like you should do it and take me and i was like i can't my dad will notice so she slips away leaves the llama with nigel and she's just alone climbing this mountain and she basically it it seems to be like the start of frostbite you know she and she gets uh, altitude sickness which her dad warned her about we see darwin climbing up the mountain towards her but then he starts speaking in nigel's voice using his breathing technique going step 
and breathe, step and breathe, which was how they were supposed to get up the mountain. And seeing Nigel's voice come out of Darwin's mouth was something I just never needed to see. There was something disturbing about that. Yeah, it was definitely disorienting. And I, I mean, I think it's supposed to be, honestly, right? Like, it's supposed to remind you of like, oh, hey, she's really losing it. But yeah, it it did not make me feel great about my life. It was, you know, not quite like... um delusional dreams from Lois eating whatever it was that she ate or drinking whatever it is that she drank. Do you know what I'm talking about? That, like, trippy dream that she had. Yes. It's, it's not uh, quite that level. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. But it's still scary. There's a life or death element to this episode that not many Nicktoons have. Yeah, and, and that happens a lot in this show, and again, yes. it somehow... Obviously, you know, she's going to be okay, but, like, somehow you just, there's a little part of me every time that's like, this is it, this is, this is the finale, she's going to die. Like, <laughs> they're just going to kill her off. That's <laughs> how it's going to go down. Um, yeah, I mean, this one, too, like, right, she's, she's nowhere near her dad. Uh, I mean, admittedly, slightly poor parenting that he didn't notice that she was gone sooner. Yeah. Um, yeah. but... But that's also probably how he found her, because ultimately he finds her. We're led to believe it's these, like, Incan uh, native people who are either in, like, a ice structure, and Nigel enters. And yeah, I really thought it was, like, a fever dream kind of thing at first, and uh, thought maybe at first it was, like, a fever dream in Eliza's dying mind, you know, and then realized what kind of show I was watching. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Like that's not gonna happen. Yeah, she only has she only has but, one moment of delusion. She doesn't go two two levels deep. Yeah, but my favorite moment of this episode is that we find out that Nigel rescued Eliza. You know, found her, rescued her, and then wasn't mad at her through the llama. The llama tells Eliza what happened, and so Nigel keeps his humility. He's a very humble character. And we would never hear him boast about doing something like this for his daughter. She never would have known. And now he thinks she doesn't know because he doesn't think llamas can talk. (laughs) Yeah, it's also, um, you know, I just, I like that he doesn't get super scoldy with her, which again is part of why I'm like, I don't. I don't get why she acts like she has these super strict parents. He he literally, he's just like, oh, I would have done the same at your age. Like. Yeah, he was very chill about it, which didn't totally make sense to me, but that's also how he is. Right, I, and I think he gets the inner adventure in her, and, you know, yeah. I think yes. he was scared and then was probably just, like, relieved and was like, all right, well, you know. And, and probably, honestly, a small part of him was probably a little bit proud that she's at least interested in all of this enough to go out on her own. Um, probably recognizes that she shouldn't do it again, but... Yeah, again, it, it's just kind of like a part of me was like, Eliza, what are you doing acting like you have strict parents? Like Right. But once she realized her dad's Oh yeah, her, she comes she was around. Much, she uh, comes around. Much better, yeah. And uh she does sing with him down the mountain as they uh return to the Com V and meet up with Marianne and Debbie and Darwin and Donnie. And I thought that was a lovely sort of arc, you know, that she goes from, uh, Nigel's like, why aren't you singing, honey? And she's like, I'm singing on the inside. And then at the end, she's loudly singing this, like, ridiculous camping song with him. It's just very wholesome. Yeah, and I just, I know it's predictable, I know it always happens, but I can't help but love the cute little family get-together moments with them. It's just always cute to me, 100% of the time. And, uh, yes. yeah. Especially that Valentine's Day episode. Oh. Do you remember that yes. one? That was one of my favorite. That was my favorite Wild Thornberries episode. I've same, seen. and it it warmed my heart. It really did. It was so good. Yes. Um, and this one has nuggets of that. The sort of you see that they are a close family despite all of their weirdness and their differences. Yeah, it's. I love this. I love the show. Um, I don't necessarily yeah, think we need to watch it any more than we have, and I think infrequent little doses of it is plenty. Um, yeah. I'd love to touch it one like one or two more times this calendar year, yeah. though, even though I know we are on limited episodes yeah, now. Yeah, I'll give it that. I, I think, like you said, it, it is a little formulaic, but I think they do a good job of sort of teaching you about these different places, these different animals, without it being way too, like, yeah. 
nature showy. And it's not preachy. And so... And I think the different kinds of animals help vary it up, too. Like, that makes it less formulaic, because you always know you're going to get a new wacky character in one of the animals. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, you're in different locations, and there's different things going on. It's... I don't want to say... It's not monotonous. It's just, like, I could see it, like... I wouldn't want to watch this every week, right? I wouldn't want this to be... I wouldn't yeah. do, like, a spin-off show for this one, personally. But... Right, right. Um... Yeah, or or imagine binging the wild thornberries. I feel like I just would by the third episode would just be completely checked. Yeah, I'd be out. like, all right, I get it. She's gonna be yeah. in danger again, and yeah. <laughs> oh, there's Debbie hating being there. <laughs> what a shock! Yeah, which also, like, I've become more sympathetic to Debbie over the 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 years of F and N. Like, her, she didn't ask for any of this. You know what I think it know? is, Casey. I think it's like the more you watch, the more that you realize, like, oh wow. She's there for, like, a long time, you know? Like <laughs> That's so, so real, yeah. Yeah, that's like, that's, she just wants to be a normal teenager. She's a lot like Jenny, in a way, from Teenage Robot. Could, like, they both just want to be regular teenagers, but there's something in the way. I could see them being good friends, actually. They've got, like, kind of different totally. tones or whatever, but I could see them bonding over a lot of similarities. <laughs> That would be quite the crossover. Uh, crossovers <laughs> wanted right there instead of Rugrats Go Wild get a... Call it the uh, the Debbie Jenny power hour. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, uh, but overall, this is an adorable episode. The final button is great, Eliza, saying they're pretty... Cu- they're pretty cool about her family and her and, El- her and Debbie burst out laughing. Like, their parents are such dorks, but they are cool in their own way. Yeah, absolutely. Um... I think that's all I've got on this one, but it was it was a fun watch. Glad to get back to the Thornberries. And, uh, Tim Tim Curry is a national treasure. We got to say that before we move on. His voice for our, Nigel is iconic for a reason. It's incredible. Yeah, and I, I'm interested to see how, especially with all of his memes, how he'll be doing in in Nick Madness, which I know we'll talk about a little bit in the conclusion too. But just. Yes, and now that brackets are out, you know, we can say he's a six seed, which I feel like is about right. I think I put a lot of the meme related ones in the fives or sixes. Yeah, the memes the memes are uh, important. We found that out during our last poll. So uh <laughs> that I'm gonna keep yeah. that in mind when I build my bracket out personally. Yeah, I wonder if anyone I haven't looked too hard at the prediction brackets. I wonder if anyone's predicted Nigel final four or even to win it all. That would be something. Yeah, it would. All right. Well before we get too deep into this are we are we going to move into the conclusion i think we are all right you guys our twitter poll for this week is uh, kind of related to a comment made at the beginning by darwin which are better llamas or giraffes are llamas really just want to be <laughs> giraffes are they better who knows who knows yeah, this this one came from the brilliant mind of my co-host. It's a, a great Twitter poll topic, very universal, and I truly have no idea how it's going to turn out. Yeah, honestly, because uh, truthfully, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even think of pairing those against each other until till he calls calls it out yeah. like that. So, uh, interested the, to see they're the neck animals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, next week, it's here. It'll be March, which means it will be time for our Nick Madness episode one of six this year. That'll include, so episode six will be the the winner where we pick an episode or two centered around the character and just a celebration of the whole thing. This is episode one. No voting will have taken place yet, and the brackets will still be live. So if you listen to us break it down next week and you decide you want to redo your bracket, feel free to send another one into that email. I will take your latest one on that. So it's really happening, guys. Keep sending in those brackets. We're getting a lot of them, and we're getting so excited. You guys have been doing amazing with them. Yeah, uh, definitely excited to see how this one plays out. I know we got all sorts of hype last year. I know there's going to be upsets. There always are. Um, so <laughs> excited to see. We've got a lot more around, so I think it'll I think it'll be a lot of fun. Um, also, again, all of that can be found on our Twitter page. Make sure you're following our Twitter. Um, and just a clarification again, these are your predictions, not your votes. The votes will happen on Twitter with polls. Yes. The predictions are just who do you think will win, not necessarily who you like better. Those can totally be different. They often and, will. 
And I realized that I changed up the system a little bit from when we recorded last week. So, like, we originally said we were going to do that submission website again where you screenshot and do all that. The new system, as we said on Twitter, is what you should follow, which is download the document from Google Drives. It's pinned to the top of our Twitter. Uh, fill it out and then email it to us, fnnpodcast91 at gmail.com. And no one's really had any issues with that yet. Also, early on, I accidentally had Stew Pickles on there twice. Really, the 11 seed in the upper right corner should be Reg Rocket. I updated the bracket, so you should be fine. But if you downloaded it in those first couple hours, just go ahead and re-download it. All right. Um, All that being said, again, be sure to Find us on all of our social media. We're on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, as well as Apple Podcasts. I do want to quickly throw out, too, um, uh, Cam mentioned on our Twitter that there are apps that you can use on Android to get to our podcast. Um, I don't know how that works. I don't know if you could still just search it the same way. This, I'm an Android user, and I, I don't even follow our, my own podcast. That's how good of a co-host <laughs> I am. But just in case you were unaware, if you were an Android user and we're feeling left out apparently there are podcast apps where you can find us so uh fun to know <laughs> yeah i was so i was so glad to hear that and thank you for that cam because i i have not uploaded the podcast to anything android related so i just assumed but there must be apps that take the itunes feed and make them listenable for android which is awesome so eventually i would like us to be on you know stitcher google play all the usual ones but you know this works for now and now we've got youtube so Thank you, Cam. Thank you, everybody. We love hearing from you, and we've had a lot more interaction as we build to Nick Madness. Thank you guys so much for listening, and we'll see you next week for that first round of Nick Madness.